Hey guys, Steve Blair. Today I got 10 tips for new players on World of Warships Legends. This game's easy to pick up and play in terms of controls and kind of the general idea. But to pick it up and play it well, you're going to have to practice a lot and you're going to have to kind of learn a lot about the game in the background. I got a lot of videos set up for beginners in my beginner's guide playlist. If you're new, you can check those out. That should help you out quite a bit. These are just 10 tips to kind of help you avoid stumbling blocks right out of the gate though. So first up, and these aren't going to be in any order and they're not going to coincide necessarily with the game in the background. It's just a bonus mall top game that I have laying around. Tip number one, don't sell your ships as you're going up the tech tree. I mean if you want to sell your tier one and tier two, fine. But a lot of new players, what they do is they unlock, let's say they're on the tier four American Battleship New York, then they unlock the tier five New Mexico. Now, to buy the New Mexico, you got to pay some credits, and then to upgrade it, you got to pay some credits. So the temptation is going to be there to sell your tier four to do that. My recommendation, strong recommendation, is do not do that. Hang on to those ships because you'd get half as much back for selling them as you paid for them to begin with, and you're going to want those ships. We're going to talk about service costs coming up, but you can you can uh, put yourself in a massive bind just by winding up with just one tier seven at the end of your grind. You're going to run out of money very quickly, you're going to go bankrupt, and that's going to be the most difficult position to get out of in terms of progression in this game. So do not sell those ships as much as you're going to be tempted to. This game is about grinding. You're going to have to strap yourself in and settle in and do it properly. <laughs> Tip number two pertains to shell selection. I do have a video on this as well in the beginner's playlist, but I'm just going to give you some general ideas. I see new players shooting the wrong shell often. It's very hard to understand what to do. Again, I'm not going to explain necessarily why right now, but just how. Uh, destroyers, if you're going to pick one shell, just load HE. You can play the entire game with HE. You'll do just fine. Likewise, battleships. You're going to just pick one shell, pick AP. You know, this is going to, for 95% of the battleships, just shooting AP every single salvo, you're going to have much better results than shooting any HE whatsoever. Cruisers, uh, usually you want to be flipping back and forth most actively for that class, but if you're just going to pick one shell, I would go ahead and load HE. Basically, this is going to tie into our next point, but you want to be using AP when your ships are showing you the broadside and they're flat on their screen whereas HE is going to be more effective when they're angled they're kind of pointed at you or away from you but it gets very complicated very quickly again we have videos covering this but if you're just going to pick one shell per class go ahead and use HE destroyers HE for cruisers AP for battleships speaking of getting shot in the side uh, this is a, another problem that new players struggle with constantly. They sit there with their full broadside exposed to a ship that they're dueling. The ship they're dueling, like that ship on the screen right there, that's an angled ship. Uh, if you're broadside fighting an angled ship, you're going to lose 9 out of 10 times, assuming the other player's uh, not completely brand new to the game. Getting shot in the side, you're not angling your armor, you're taking the maximum amount of, amount of damage. When you're angled, you're taking the minimal amount of damage. So do not show the broadside if you can avoid it to the people that are shooting at you. That's one of the main core concept of this game is armor angling. And the better you can get at that, uh, the better you will be at the game. So work on that from the get-go. You'll be off to a great start. Tip number four, you don't want to be sitting too far back for the majority of the game. This is something that you see quite a bit. Uh, basically players will be in a situation where they're not they don't have any red targets within their firing range the firing range is the white circle on the map uh, you know you can actually get out of position where you're not able to affect things very much at all and that's going to lower the score you get at the end of the game which is going to mean less xp less credits uh, it's going to make the grind harder but you're also going to lose games which is going to also have the output that you're gaining in terms of credits and xp so it's kind of a fine line and it comes with experience how far do you want to push forward you don't want to push for too far forward and get focused by the enemy but sitting too far in the back not doing anything really what you got to be thinking to yourself is when was the last time i shot someone when was the last time i pulled the trigger if it's been 30 seconds okay you're probably in a good position 
Or if it's been less than 30 seconds, you're probably in a good position. If it's been 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 15 minutes and you haven't fired your guns, then you're probably out of position and you need to look in the map and get yourself into a more relevant position. Basically, you need to be dealing damage whenever your guns are reloaded. That's the ideal. That's what we're shooting for. If you're unable to do that, then you're probably not where you need to be. Tip number five, service costs. We briefly alluded to this earlier. Basically how it works is service cost is a flat fee that's paid at the beginning of the match. So, and it's by tier, not by ship, not by class. So all tier four ships pay the same service cost when the match starts. And then how you overcome that is you earn credits and XP by doing things that help your team win the game. So anything you're getting ribbons for, anytime you damage ships, uh, anytime you capture objectives, Anytime you spot targets and your enemy shoots those targets that you're spotting for them, all these things increase your uh, earned credits, and that's how you overcome the service cost. Where does the service cost become a problem? Tier 6 and primarily Tier 7. That's when the service costs are expensive. It's designed that way on purpose to, number one, keep uh, players playing all tiers. Uh, the idea is you got to go down and play a game or two in Tier 5, and then go back and play tier 7 to cover that service cost until you get a lot better at the game then you'll be making money hopefully every game but you know you gotta understand how it works service costs also makes it so new players can't spend all their time at the high tiers high tiers are where the ships punish you very hard and the skilled players are hopefully hanging out so you don't want to be spending all your time up there service costs are going to prevent you from doing so if you're trying to make credits tier 5 Tech tree ships, the ones that are free for everyone, those make the best money. And tier 6 premiums, if you have any tier 6 premiums, those also make uh, the best money in the game. So that's how you kind of overcome the service cost. Tip number 6, shoot at the ships your teammates are engaging. You kind of got to, a lot of this game is being aware of your surroundings and uh, responding accordingly. And if you can keep an eye on who your team's shooting at, who's low on the enemy team in terms of health, and then pile on to those players. That's how you're going to remove those ships from the game quickly and turn the tide of the battle in your favor. So pay attention to who you're shooting. You know, you don't always have to do it. Every All rules have uh, exceptions to them. But in general, if you can kind of team up with your teammates, even if you're not actively communicating and just kind of work on the same target, they're typically not going to be paying attention. So it's kind of on you in terms of responsibility to... Uh, pay attention and combine your efforts with your teammates. Tip number seven, look at the map and look at it often. This is called map awareness. This is the most important skill in the game. It's the one most players lack the most. And frankly, pretty much every player of every skill level can always improve the map awareness. Uh, if you're in a battleship and you reload every 30 seconds, pull the trigger, take two or three seconds to look at the map, Get a feel for where your teammates are going. Look for broadside targets to shoot at. Uh, look for opportunities. Do I have to go back to the base? Defend, so on and so forth. Get into the habit of doing that. You want to check. The best players are going to be primarily looking at the map and gr glancing at the game screen. Let's just put it that way. But to start off with, you're going to have to try and work it like a muscle. Practice looking at the map as much as possible. That'll help you out. You'll see targets that you wouldn't otherwise see. Your scores will go up, your win rate will go up, you'll have more enjoyment, you'll become a better player. Look at the map, look at it often. Tip number eight, don't race to the high tiers. We kind of alluded to this earlier, but, you know, the game's designed so that the more experienced players are going to be playing at the higher tiers more often, the less experienced players are going to be playing at the lower tiers more often. Of course, when you start off, you're going to only have low tier ships, but... A lot of people, what they'll do is they'll say, I want to play Japanese battleships, and I'm going to grind that line. They go all the way from Tier 1 to Tier 7, and then they find that they're not very experienced, and they're getting their butts kicked at Tier 7. My advice, grind all the tiers, all the ships in the game, to Tier 3, then to Tier 4, then to Tier 5. A lot of advantages for doing so. Number one, understanding the ship's capabilities, what the nation's lines are like, all this, it's going to give you massive advantages over players that don't understand what those ships are like because you can know what those ships' strengths and weaknesses are, play accordingly. 
but number two, by grinding tier three, tier four, tier five, gonna give you a lot more experience at lower tiers, make you much better player. Fundamentally, you're gonna work on all these things that we're talking about and all these things that'll make you a better player. And rather than trying to accumulate those skills by dying in the first, first 30 seconds at a tier seven match, um, from an experienced player that knows what they're doing, you can you got time to develop those skills at these low tiers. That's what the low tiers are meant for. They're meant for new players. Spend your time there. Just grind out all those tier threes. Uh, you know, it's not a race. You don't have to get to the tier seven. Nothing magic happens there except for the ships become very punishing. And whenever you make mistakes, you get sunk to the bottom of the ocean very quickly. So, my recommendation: take your time in the low tiers. Unlock everything. You know. For, kind of horizontally rather than vertically, I guess, is one way to put it. And then just take it from there. Tip number nine, level your commanders slowly. Very, very common for players of all experience levels to kind of have one or two commanders that they put a lot of points into and then kind of regret it later, like, oh, I'm never going to use this commander again. Uh, so my advice, level those commanders very slowly. Uh, level seven and level 11 are kind of the two sweet spots. I would not level any commander over level 11 until you've been playing for probably two, three, four months even, and you kind of know, number one, what lines do I like, what builds do I like for these classes of ships, so on and so forth. But you cannot be spending insignias, you cannot be spending commendations, even promotion orders. You're misallocating those into commanders that aren't worth anything is gonna cost you down the line. So take it slowly. Don't level up anyone to 11 until you're kind of sure about how the commander system works, and you'll thank yourself later. Tip number 10, selecting targets. You can see right there on the screen that ship's icon in the middle of the map, or in the middle of the screen, has a circle around it. That means he's selected. That means my gunners are actively targeting the ship. They will be much more accurate when firing against that. How you select it, I think most control uh, schemes, it's R1 on PS or right bumper on Xbox. I think there's one or two schemes where maybe it's the left uh, joystick clicking at. But select those targets, your accuracy will go way up. Always, always, always have the target selected. And looks like we're right at the end of the match. We got all 10 in, so that's good. <laughs> Hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, you should consider subscribing. There's a lot of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments? Leave them below. I do love to hear from you guys. And we'll see you all later. All right, peace.